My name is Maria Dominguez. I'm a visual artist. I came to the Lower East Side in 1954 uh, and grew up on 3rd Street. My, uh, my mother came as a seamstress. Uh, she used to sew uh, for the neighbor, the neighbors in, in, in Puerto Rico. I think uh, community mural making takes it down to its grassroots level. Uh, public art in general usually is when a person or an artist is commissioned specifically to create their art form in a public area. But it's a voice. It's a clear voice. I've been invited by El Centro of Puerto Rican Studies to conduct a mural making workshop with you. Do you know what a mural is? Community mural is when you uh, actually go in to a target community, you select a concern, or they come up with a concern, and together we create um, first writings about these concerns. From there, uh, sketches are born, and from the sketches, uh, I inherit them. I then take them home and, and do a uh, design, and then I go back to the community and we talk about the design, if, if accepted and when accepted, uh, then we execute it. I teach them how to do the actual mural on the wall. So we're going to do, not on a wall, not yet, maybe next year, we're going to do this on a piece of wood and hopefully your school will put it up someday and other students will get to see the great work you're going to do. You're going to do great work, right? Because as artists, we could get to use almost any materials, rice, thread, Cardboard, plastic, bikes, to get the message across. Don't forget that we're going to get a message across. When we get together and do our own piece, we got to think, what message do we want to tell the world about ourselves? I thought it was pretty cool, like, seeing new things that I haven't seen before. And, like, I saw, like, um, really cool artwork that, and I saw, like, a little movie, too, that was pretty cool. Bring the children into, first of all, this wonderful new gallery. Uh, so that they would be aware of, of this gallery right in their community. While in the classroom, I wanted them to learn a little bit more about Puerto Rican history. Uh, and I wanted them to make connections about how Puerto Rican history and people are a conglomerate of so many other people. So I wanted them to get a view of how they are connected to the worldwide, not just to Puerto Ricans or their community. We get to learn like where I'm from, like how it originated, what people like from it and what they did. Or details on how the struggle that they went through as well as people or their families was very mind blowing to me because each race in my eyes has been through a lot and to see their struggle and their triumph worth, is worth knowing. Okay, can someone please tell me what is this woman wearing? A coat. What else? You think it's winter? No. It's probably like fall. Fall? What do you think? It's a mint coat, so she's probably just wearing it because those are really expensive and sensitive. So she wanted to look good. <laughs> yeah. You think she wanted to look really good? And what is? Well, look at look at around. What what else is oh, around? Here? Right here. What the guy doing? Taking a picture. He's taking a picture. So somebody's sewing, and he's saying it's probably her. Came. Yeah, when she first yeah, came, already, she's probably yeah. sewing. And based on those images was a starting point for us to create our own images. But just like that stamp that we saw that that lady was sitting with her fur coat and with her machine, she was saying, look how great I'm living the life over here. But somebody said, oh yeah, but that's probably her. That's probably the same lady working in the factories. That was her. So they used to lie a lot. They used to say, I'm going to New York, I'm taking the boat, I'm taking the plane. But when they got here, life wasn't so good. I had a short amount of time. 
I was really relying on their own skill. Um, because I only had five to six sessions with them, I had to do a lot of the research and come up with ideas on how am I going to get them to translate their ideas into the mural. I'm not really good at drawing, I'm a horrible drawer. So when Miss Maria told us that we had to do that, I got nervous for a minute because if we were putting it on a board, I didn't want it to look ugly. And I especially didn't want my work to be ugly. And then be showing it to a whole bunch of people and then it looks ugly and they'd be like, ew, who did that? So when we first did it, I didn't like, I didn't like what I was doing. But then as I did it, she told me like, it didn't matter whether you was nice or it just mattered or how much effort you put into it. Did this little, what are they called? Thumbnail. Thank you. So I did a thumbnail of what this might look like. As I'm going to work with you, whatever you give me, I'm going to take back and put it on the design. And what I did is I came up with silhouettes. This way they didn't have to ponder too much about how they're going to get uh, the faces to look the way they wanted it to. So silhouettes was an easy solution for this one. For our work. First, when I did my stamp, I put the law, like I just listened to what Ms. Maria Dominguez said to do, and I followed the instructions, and then I painted it myself, I cut it out myself. So I really pretty did much everything. And then, of course, I have to walk them through the steps of creating the mural. How do you make a scale now into a 50-foot mural? So that, that in itself you, takes time to teach them how to do the grid method. So, so they could they now take a scale and enlarge it on a wall. And so, when you look at the mirror, you'll see buildings that represent New York City and our dreams, which are like the steps. My dream is to be a writer, so I wrote Word and put it as a window. The, the best part of making the mural was that it was, we actually told a story and our little steps. I, I like how everybody did this. Everything shows di different, it's not the same. Everything, every window, every part of that mural tells a story. Why we're doing this with El Centro, hopefully if and they, they had an, a, a wonderful idea to bring the archives in any way, in, in this case, the, this exhibit, uh, into El Barrio and to say this is the true story, it's not a textbook story. We could find it, we could actually go into the files and find the truth. It's not a fabricated story, it's a true story, firsthand. Artist Maria Dominguez requested Centro support while working on an exhibition of her murals to be presented to the Puerto Rican community in Lorraine, Ohio in the fall of 2009. We continue our partnership as the project evolved and eventually moved to New York City in which it has been shown in various cultural organizations in the area and the classroom. The experience depicted here is also a byproduct of this research partnership and it is a documentation of Maria Dominguez Art Initiative project. No, I, I think it was a, a great pleasure for me and a great honor to be uh, included in El Centro's efforts coming into East Harlem and that I was asked to be part of the educational aspect of it. So to me it's a great honor and I hope it's a pilot program that just grows. It does symbolize a lot of things. It symbolizes usually individuals and it symbolizes our community. <laughs> it's fun, uh, it's become a second nature. It almost becomes like performance art. And also the fact that you can instill pride in a community by beautifying it. Dominguez's murals tell the stories of our migration, history, and culture. They celebrate our contributions to our new barrios. The works of arts commemorate who we are and celebrate a metamorphosis into collective memory. They facilitate a new reading of our histories. With a deeper understanding of our history, we build up individual and communal self-respect. 
It's with that confidence we can continue to challenge what we think we know or have been taught.